So are you on the internet and then you see this car that's supposed to be 400 horsepower, but it's producing 340 horsepower and you're like, what the heck is going on? Today I'm going to be talking about how we can maintain that horsepower, keeping our cars more reliable and keeping all that power that was, should be in our car at all band at all times. So today I'm going to explain engine cooling. Welcome back to another Talking Mods. On today's subject, we're going to talk about engine cooling. It's a very vast subject. It has a lot of components. We're going to talk primarily about engines. I'm not going to go um, into oil coolers and so forth. I will give a comparison down the line. So you can skip ahead if you already know the technical stuff. I will start out by giving you guys a technical breakdown. We'll have some diagrams to explain how engine cooling works. I won't go too crazy into it. There's a lot of great resources. We'll put them down below so that if you're really, really want to geek out, want to get into engineering of it, you guys can check it out. But I will give you guys a simplified version so you guys can simply understand it. And then we can talk about, you know, the differences between air cooled, um, air to water cooled, and we can also talk about the modification scene on how it improves your vehicle. So um, obviously all the parts, all the components we do have available for you guys on Mod Bargains. So if you guys go to Mod Bargains, you guys can find anything you need or you guys can contact us. We're happy to help, you know, get your car set up and so forth. But let's go into the technical side, explain how engine cooling works. So the easiest way to explain engine cooling is really to kind of think of it as the body. And a lot of the mod videos I've talked about is thinking about the human body also in the same way that a vehicle works. And you might be like, well, what the heck is he talking about? So I'll start explaining it and I'll use analogies to explain. And I'll start off with the water pump. Now, the water pump is just like our heart. It pumps, right? And we have, we have our arteries, we have our veins. So if you remember basic biology, um, what do we want to do? We want to circulate that blood all across our system, right? The same thing happens where we want to circulate coolant. And I'll explain coolant in a second. So we have that water pump. Now, what is it pumping? It is pumping coolant. So we've got, we've got the water pump pumping. It's going to go through the tubes. It's going to travel up to the engine block. It hits the cylinder head and it's going to basically cool down the cylinder blocks, right? We're generating a lot of heat within these motors, right? There's combustion happening. And so combustion is happening and there's friction, right? Even if I just go like this, I can feel that heat coming off. So as the cylinder heads are moving, we've got friction happening. So you got to dispel that heat. So it goes in there into that engine block and it decides, is it really that hot that I need to start circulating it through? What determines that is gonna be your thermostat. How does it work? It's a very simple process. It's actually the same way as a turkey thermometer works on Thanksgiving, you know? So um, it uses like a wax thing that kind of shifts it forward. So now it's gone too hot. Now the engine's been working for a while. It's gonna move that coolant all the way across. It's gonna to get to our radiator, gonna go inside the radiator. Now. Remember, we, got, we get our veins going up to our lungs. We finally get that fresh air, right? We exhale that and we get our fresh air. Well, we can't exhale it. So what ends up happening is we go inside a radiator. And if you've seen it, you know what a radiator is. It goes inside it, fills it all up, and it uses all these fins, which are basically air cooled. So we're getting air from the outside and they're hitting the fins, cools them down. Here's where it gets a little more interesting. So as it gets hotter and hotter and hotter, there's a radiator cap, right? Now that radiator cap has a certain PSI, but I believe about 15 PSI. Once it goes to a certain point, all the liquid as it's going to develop this high amount of pressure, right? You've seen it. You've seen, you've been told, hey, don't touch, don't touch the radiator cap if your car is overheating because it will burst and you will burn yourself, right? Um, and it will be very hot, even if just to, to the hand, you don't want to touch that. So, but if it was, you would feel that the pressure goes up and what ends up happening is the coolant will overflow and basically it pushes it up, it goes into a bypass, it goes into an expansion tank and it fills up there so that it doesn't spill out and doesn't create too much pressure. The whole point again is that the radiator needs to be as efficient as possible. And we'll talk about the mods that happen within the radiators, um, but that's going over there and then it goes into its outlet and back into that pump. It goes right back into the heart. So just like the lungs, hopefully we've got our exchange done extremely well. The radiator is doing our exchange and we've got it going back into the, into the pump, starts going back again through the system and just keeps on moving through. So that's the basic of liquid cooling. It works extremely well. Modern day cars use it. 
Now let's talk about air cooling and air cooling is um, a very different system. So it's not like the body in a sense. Um, it's actually more like the way computers have always been in the past. Um, and you see this generally on vehicles like older vehicles, right? And there's always this debate. And if you want to talk about the debate, feel free to post it in the comments below. Air cooled being better than liquid cool. I hear it all the time. You know, there's advantages and disadvantages, and I'll talk about that in a second. But let's explain how it works. And it's just like a computer. Imagine a heat sink on top of that CPU, a fan or air cooling that heat sink as best as possible. That's how it works. So if you talk about like old Porsche motors, which are um, have that um, boxer design, so they had the the engine is laid out further out. So each cylinder head had its own heat sink on it. And you could see that also in like motorcycles, if you see them driving on the road, they're always gonna be air cooled. Meaning that they have these heat sinks on there and that's cooling, that's cooling through the air. So as long as you have air that's nice and flowing through, and that's why Porsches have that big, you know, area behind them, you know, on the back of the, the motor, you can see there's a lot of air that can get in, air that gets in from the side. Um, well, mostly from the top actually for the Porsche, but, and they've usually got a fan as well. So that fan is also gonna help circulate the air on top of it. So air cooling systems have, a, you gotta think about it. It's got a very, a lot of nice advantages. One, it's really easy to work on. You don't have a whole lot of components. You don't have all these hoses, inlet pipes, outlet pipes. You don't have any of that happening, right? You have this heat sink situation. You have a very simple, simple system. So what that means is it's lightweight lightweight in terms of racing in terms of performance is great because we want to keep our cars as light as possible so it's got that ability you don't have antifreeze right you don't have coolant going in through the system which means there could be that possibility of corrosion uh, again so there's advantages and disadvantages it's the old method of doing things but it works um, there are fail safes as well but liquid is going to be the way we do modern day vehicles we can have higher rpms with turbo vehicles all the consistencies that we need, we're gonna stick with liquid cooling. All right guys, so that was the basics of it. Hopefully you understand how it's kind of like the, the human body, where basically we want it to circulate that coolant through, just like blood. Okay guys, so there's a lot of different components um, within the cooling system, right? And the aftermarket scene is really, really amazing on it. Now, cooling goes further, right? We have components for oil, oil cooling as well. And we'll put a diagram how that looks. And that's also very, very similar again with, you know, pump moving and everything moving through. And, you know, we've got, you know, oil coolers, same as a radiator almost, right? Similar concepts. We've got heat exchangers. Um, we've got intercoolers, all these other things. Intercoolers are to cool down the, the air. We've got oil coolers, which are, again, cool, oil goes into the motor. So keeping all these cool and efficient is gonna keep that horsepower. And when I talked about horsepower losses, I mean, on our dyno, we, you know, that's on one of the Mod Bargains videos, you know, you could see on the heat exchanger, every single run, it was basically losing on the M4, this was the F80 M4, we would see this dramatic amount of loss of power, right? And so by adding on a better heat exchanger, a more efficient one, um, example would be from like Wagner, company I visited, you're welcome to check out that video. They do a ton of engineering and explain the difference between tube and fin, bar and plate. I've talked about it in other videos and I do a know your mods about it, but where that technology is really useful and the efficiency of it by switching out your heat exchanger, retain that power. And that, that vehicle lost about 60 horsepower to the crank. So significant amount of loss. What other areas can, can be improved upon? Well, radiators can always be improved upon, right? One of the big innovations is, you know, on how to slow down the air as it hits, hits that radiator, right? You want to create turbulence. So you don't want just to hit the fin and just go right through. You want it to have some turbulence there. So there's more efficient fans, but you have, you have radiators that can create some turbulence there. Um, so it slows it down and captures more air as it travels through. You still need it to travel through, right? So, that's one of the technologies that you have there. You have aluminum radiators. Now you see that everywhere on the marketplace, right? Brands like Mishimoto, Koyorad, they, they devise aluminum radiators. Why would you want an aluminum radiator, right? And again, all these parts are available at Mod Bargains. Contact us guys. We're happy to help you guys um, improve upon it. Well, why would you want an aluminum radiator? Well, the, the standard stock radiator is usually got that plastic at the top where it connects and then plastic at the bottom. That plastic gets brittle over time and it will crack 
and it will have issues. One, the radiators are designed to with, for normal operating temperatures. They're not designed for when you make modifications or high horsepower and so forth. But even if you didn't modify, right? Even if you didn't modify your vehicle, having an aluminum radiator means that it's not going to have that, it's not going to get brittle over time. It's not going to get destroyed. And usually they all come with a lifetime warranty because they know that they're going to be able to hold up over time, right? So they're not going to crack. So again, aluminum radiator, great idea. What about the hoses? If you ever look at the hoses that are on your vehicle, again, they're made out of these plastic. They become brittle over time, you know, heat over and over, heat cycles, and eventually they start cracking. They have issues. Again, remember guys, there's a lot of pressure that goes in there. So using, now they use a lot of silicone hoses. Samco was one of the first companies in the aftermarket scene that really kind of brought quality hoses out. Now there's a lot of great silicone hoses. Mishimoto makes some. There's, there's a lot of other great ones out there. Um, so why would you want to replace that? Well, again, you want to retain, you want to keep a consistent amount of pressure throughout the system. You don't want it to have loss. You don't want it to crack. You don't want it to bend, right? You don't want there to be a failure there. So, and you want to keep it as lightweight as possible, right? You don't want to add more weight into your car. So just replacing the hoses is a great idea. So, Yes, there are plenty of amazing modifications to improve and maintain your horsepower on your vehicle. Guys, I know you guys have a lot of vehicles that you guys have and that have needed these modifications. So I would appreciate if you guys share them down below. What, what have you guys seen? You know, what have, you know, certain vehicles, for example, the, the 370Z, the transmission cooler was non-existent. And the, a lot of the transmission coolers that were out there just didn't have enough design or, or spent, the companies that produced it weren't very good. Setrab made a fantastic cooler for it. Um, the guys over at AE used a Setrab cooler and then devised their own. And I remember when that, that came out, it dominated on, at the track. It just was super consistent um, and it was able to last the whole entire track day instead of just doing one lap and then going right into limp mode. So anyway guys, um, I look forward to your questions and answering them. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. It really helps us sharing this content um, and helps this channel grow. And that's how we also stay in business, guys. So anyway, I will see you on the next Talking Mods.